Okay, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Bob McGoy. Brandon's out of our Indianapolis office. Um, been with us quite a while. He's got some really good information on how to work with files from outside of SOLIDWORKS inside of SOLIDWORKS. So I'm going to give it over to Brandon and have a great presentation. Thank you, Bob. Okay, so uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Brandon Nelms, and I'll be your host today uh, for 3D Interconnect Tips and Tricks for SOLIDWORKS. Let me start by uh, laying out a, a typical scenario uh, our customers face every day and see if it sounds uh, familiar to you as well. Uh, if supply, chart, uh, supply par chain partners are all using SOLIDWORKS, it's super easy to use those files in an assembly and create an in-context design part relative to all those supplied SOLIDWORKS files. And even better is in that situation, uh, when those suppliers uh, change their SOLIDWORKS files, uh, simply replacing their, uh, the SOLIDWORKS files and rebuilding the assembly and part goes uh, perfect to size every time with respect to all those supplied parts, and sounds about right, doesn't it? Well, of course not. Uh, and the reality is uh, not all our customers um, have suppliers that are as lucky as we are. Uh, they have dreaded other CAD systems. So what do those suppliers do? Well, first and foremost, they translate files and send them over where they then need to be repaired in SOLIDWORKS to get good, clean geometry. Uh, and by the way, uh, translated files absolutely need to be repaired via import diagnostics. I cannot tell you how many times I've seen problems that all stemmed from skipping that really, really important step. Um, I digress. But uh, anyway, now that we've got uh, good, clean SOLIDWORKS geometry, that can be used just like we did to create a SOLIDWORKS part uh, relative to all that other CAD geometry. And all of that's fine as long as there's no changes. And please feel free, you can share in the chat window that one time in your career where there was never a design change, because let's face it, there's always design changes, right? But uh, what happens when the suppliers change their CAD files? Well, now they're going to have to translate those files again. And we've got to repair all of those files again. Go to update in SOLIDWORKS, and inevitably there's going to be a bunch of problems that we're going to need to go back and fix until we get our good, clean geometry out of it. So at this point, it makes sense to stop for a minute and talk a little bit about uh, what file types can we use inside of SOLIDWORKS. From a neutral file format, uh, standpoint, this is our, our order of preference, is one, first and foremost, would be parasolids. That's the uh, kernel that's used by SOLIDWORKS, and it's an actively maintained uh, format, so that's a good one to use as parasolids. Uh, the standard step file, uh, that's up to step 242, which includes PMI data, and that's actively maintained by the ISO group. And then we've got the ACES kernel, which is also actively maintained by Dassault. Last but not least is IGIS. Uh, and it should be noted that the last time the IGIS standard was updated was when Braveheart won Best Picture of the Year. So if you think back, Mel Gibson was doing that quite a while ago. There's been a few updates in SOLIDWORKS since then. Uh, as well as uh, native, CAD, uh, native CAD files as well, including Contia, Inventor, ProE. Solid Edge and Unigraphics. We'll get into this a little bit more detail a little later. So the next question is, uh, why might we use different import file types? Uh, well, you know, we can be able to modify CAD geometry um, without having a native CAD system, right? Like add draft to something. Um, with native CAD files, if we just get a native file from, from a customer, that's actually fewer translation steps. So that would be um, definitely preferential first. And we want to make sure that we use that order, uh, native geometry first and then parasolid, then step. Um, 
if possible. And, and the question becomes, why do we go one direction or another? Well, we might be able to get cleaner geometry or, or make changes to the geometry without actually um, having to uh, use the CAD, the other CAD package. So we can try different options to see in SOLIDWORKS, how does it uh, translate through? And I'd be doing you guys a disservice if I didn't spend at least a moment talking about translation mapping. If the uh, receiving CAD system doesn't all uh, support a specific entity, uh, it may not be represented correctly in the receiving system. So we really want to shoot for 3D solid geometry. That's what's desired. Um, and then the question becomes, well, why might not that happen? Uh, well, sometimes we've got different tolerances in different systems, so one CAD system versus the next for a specific uh, function or feature. Um, and then also uh, translation mapping. Not every CAD system supports the same features. So uh, if you were to use one of uh, maybe the new tab and slot that came out uh, last year from SOLIDWORKS, another CAD system may not recognize that. Um, so you might be able to, to replace some and fix some of the issues. Um, but there might be uh, still some gaps in there. Um, also, not every su surface will translate uh, between systems, depending on how that surface is defined from one system to the next. So let's talk about, about what, uh, what does import diagnostics do. Um, really, it helps us locate and fix problems within uh, imported geometry. Uh, so when we have these issues with imported geometry, uh, we can use import diagnostics to find those specific areas and then use some automated tools to try and repair that geometry um, and make sure that we've got good solid, um, good solid geometry for later use in the system, so later use for, for features and, and edits. So as you can tell, uh, dealing with other CAD formats can get really involved. So what if there was a totally different approach, one where your suppliers didn't translate the data at all, but merely uh, sent you the native CAD geometry, and you could use those files directly in SOLIDWORKS to design a part? And better yet, what if when your supply chain updated their files, all you had to do in SOLIDWORKS was refresh your model, and your SOLIDWORKS model was up to, up to date. Sounds too good to be true, right? Exactly what uh, 3D Interconnect is built to do. Uh, 3D Interconnect is a referencing system that was built right under the hood of SOLIDWORKS starting in 2017, and you may not have even seen it. So let's talk about what SOLIDWORKS 3D Interconnect is. It's pretty simple if we actually break down the name. Uh, SOLIDWORKS did a good job, I think, with the name and, and giving us some clues to what it actually is and what it means. Uh, so if we take 3D, right, that's CAD geometry or CAD data. And enter is between, right? And then connect, you can think of it as a linkage. So it's a link between CAD data. Uh, and really it's a way uh, to design naturally where you focus more on the environment you're used to and then working in SOLIDWORKS and less about where the data actually came from. And before we get any further uh, talking about 3D Interconnect, uh, it's also important to note what 3D Interconnect is not. Technically, it's not a translator, even though there's actually a uh, different translation happening under the hood. Um, so it's technically not just a straight up translator, even though there's a, that is piece of, uh, a piece of it. And most importantly, uh, it's not perfect for every situation. You know, if we had a crazy design change in SOLIDWORKS that we would anticipate causing downstream errors, like where if we go from a cube to a cylinder here, the same kind of referencing issues we might have with that system from a cube to a, a cylinder in SOLIDWORKS uh, we would expect with 3D Interconnect uh, as well. It's it's um, going to operate pretty much the same way. You enable 3D Interconnect. Well, if you're in SOLIDWORKS 2017, uh, and you can always check that just by going to the About in your Help file or in the Help menu. Uh, so if you're in 2017, it's actually under the Import tab. There's a drop down for Inventor, Katia, Creo, NX, 
and Solid Edge, and you can check the Enable 3D Interconnect. Uh, and then in SolidWorks 2018 and beyond, um, you can go through and see it's under the General tab of uh, the Import Settings. So let's talk through a couple of use cases where 3D Interconnect provides capabilities to seamlessly incorporate uh, CAD data from multiple sources. The first scenario is an, as an assembly reference. Uh, in this case, my vendor is supplying the power pack for my design using Inventor. And here you'll see my SolidWorks assembly, and it's time to add my vendor's power pack. So rather than remodel their geometry, I'll just insert that inventor assembly into my SolidWorks assembly. So I'll browse to the inventor assembly my supplier provided, and I actually don't need inventor software in order to open these files. The inventor assembly comes in just as if it were a SolidWorks assembly, and everything I'm used to doing with SolidWorks models like applying mates, displaying section views, and adding model transparency, it all works the same. Now remember, the inventor data here hasn't necessarily been translated and no new files actually have been created. There's no geometry conversion issues to deal with, and in fact, if we look at the feature manager tree here, uh, the icons indicate that these models are indeed references to external CAD files. So now the mates can be applied uh, just like you'd expect, including mates to reference geometry. I'll go ahead and center the battery pack in the compartment and mount it flush against the back wall of the housing, and then slide it down and mate it on the bottom rib down here. Now notice the retaining brackets offset too far from the battery pack. So we need to build in some design logic to take up that clearance, which would require an in-context relation and you really wouldn't even think about doing that with dumb solids because notice how even these holes and fasteners move along with that. So we might do it the first time, uh, but changes are, are inevitable and that could cause problems. So let's talk about what does that look like if there is changes. You know, we built our SolidWorks assembly ref, uh, referencing our vendors files. Uh, but, you know, maybe through the design process, we figure out we need more power. So, you know, we ask our vendor and say, hey, can you go ahead and send me a larger version of that? Uh, so they send me a new version of the same design, same file name and everything. So in the Windows folder, we just replace the old inventor assembly with the new data. And now back in SolidWorks, if we look closely at the feature manager icon, an update symbol shown. And basically... 3D Interconnect understands that there's a new version of the model available. And with a simple right mouse click to the update command, that's all we need. And you watch closely, the retaining bracket adjusts to the fit, those holes and the fasteners all move. So the next use case where we might leverage uh, the power of 3D Interconnect is for derived parts. Uh, that's to say with maybe we get a blank or a starting file and we decide to add additional post-machining features. So in our assembly, we need a gear plate for this drive motor. Now our supplier provides this to us as a Creo file and notice how PTC uses the dot .1, dot .2 convention to keep track of, of versions. Now let's go ahead and open the part in SolidWorks. Like you saw before, there's really no translation going on here. So let's take a closer look at what I mean by that. From the feature manager, it looks like a SolidWorks part. There's default reference planes, material folder, and everything. But instead of a dumb solid for the import, we see this part is actually linked to the external Creo file. So now the gear plate comes in multiple sizes here. So we don't anticipate needing to make any changes to the base geometry, but we do need to do some additional machining. So from the SolidWorks design library, we can drop in any one of our standard keyway cutouts and a radial slot that will give us the correct rotational range of motion. 
And now we can insert our SOLIDWORKS part here into the assembly and made it into position. But once we get it into position, we can see that we were supplied the wrong size part. The diameter is correct, but it's got the wrong size pocket. So the machine slot's not lining up with that radial slot. So we used the file our supplier provided us, but obviously it wasn't right. Uh, so we'll need to get them to send us the correct replacement. Let's take a look at how 3D Interconnect handles changes. So our supplier sent us the corrected part indicated by that .2 version that we pasted in the Windows directory. Now in SOLIDWORKS, we see the refresh symbol indicating a new version is available, and we just right-click to update. Now the replacement part looks great, and notice how the assembly is automatically up-to-date as well. Remember, no translation was really involved here, and the native Creo part is fully associative to our assembly. So I'm sure you're already seeing the power of 3D Interconnect as a referencing system, but uh, what about those workflows where we just don't want updating to occur? So first, let's insert a native solid edge drive motor into the assembly just as we've done before. Now we can mate this into position using smart mates and align the mounting holes just like we would expect with any CAD geometry. But when we get it into place, we can see the center hole is going to cause a problem. It's not in the correct position. And after talking to our purchasing team, we find out the supplier doesn't offer a proper replacement. And quite frankly, it'll be cheaper for us to make that little piece in-house anyway. So we're going to go ahead and break the link to that part and convert it to SOLIDWORKS. Now, incidentally, this is workflow is basically how we've actually dealt with imported geometry in the past. After we've broken the link at the assembly, we do need to break the link at the part as well. So we can break the link just by right-clicking either on the file in the feature manager or on the part itself out in the graphics uh, area. So when we break the link, SOLIDWORKS performs high-quality geometry imports. It converts to a dumb solid, and now we can make our own specific design changes using direct editing or FeatureWorks. Now, in this case, FeatureWorks is going to go ahead and recognize this as an M7 hole, and that hole is fully editable. So if we go back over to the assembly, we can locate that hole in the correct spot. Three D Interconnect really gives us the granular control to maintain links to native files while only converting the files we really want to change. So whether you want to use your supplier's files as a reference, add additional features, or modify them as you've always done in the past, SolidWorks Three D Inter Interconnect has a workflow that can support your needs. In fact, we can also now support neutral file formats. Uh, these include STEP, IGIS, ASIS, um, all with 3D Interconnect as well. Now these files no longer need to be translated and can instead be inserted directly into SOLIDWORKS assemblies and used like any other component. And in this example we're inserting a control panel which was provided in a neutral file format and this will work the same way as, as native third-party files do with 3D Interconnect. In addition, these neutral files will recognize when they've changed or be replaced. And like thir native third-party files, they can be easily updated without the need for deleting and re-importing files. However, it should be noted that uh, neutral files do not support the same intelligent face ID mapping that native third-party files do. So some cleanup might be required after an update. 3D Interconnect also has the ability to support reference geometry. 
Reference planes are useful for you know mating or useful as sketch planes. Uh, likewise, any kind of unconsumed sketch can be used inside a, just like a SOLIDWORKS sketch, enabling you to reference and create features from files outside of SOLIDWORKS. So in this example, we're using a sketch from one of the inserted parts to cut a hole in the front, place of the front plate of this cabinet. So this capability allows you to do more with just existing files uh, from other 3D design tools and don't need to, you won't have to migrate data. And lastly, custom properties are now also supported for third-party CAD files. Uh, these are available either by opening up a third-party file um, or inserting it directly into an assembly. This means that bills of materials draw and drawings can now automatically read and populate themselves using the information that were previously de defined in their native design tool. So the big question is, what now? Uh, go ahead and try and turn on 3D Interconnect in your SOLIDWORKS options. Get some native files from your suppliers and give it a try yourself and see just how powerful 3D Interconnect can be in your organization. So at this point, we can go ahead and open it up for any questions we've got. So it looks like uh, I've got a question here that says, how do you do import diagnostics with 3D Interconnect? And that is a great question. You don't. <laughs> um, import diagnostics actually changes face ID mapping. When you're going through and you're healing geometry, uh, basically, because of those tolerance issues and sometimes there's overlaps and all that, uh, that tool is basically reforming the solid so that it's good and watertight in SOLIDWORKS. And as a result, it's remapping face ID numbers, um, or has the potential to at least anyway. As a result, 3D Interconnect actually uses the face ID mapping as its intelligence for, for the updating and for... Um, you know, any kind of modifications down the road that you're referencing. So if you go in and do import diagnostics, it's going to change the face ID mapping, which means all the updating doesn't work. So you can go in and do import diagnostics. Uh, I think you might have noticed that, and that's kind of the question. Uh, you run it, and you can see if the geometry is bad or not, uh, but you can't do any changes to, to the file itself. What you end up having to do uh, is break the link uh, and then work at, with it as a dumb solid if you need to um, go through and make those modifications. So, good question.